I did it, folks. I read the 10 most popular craft books on AuthorTube in nine weeks. And I'm dead on the inside. My main focus of this video, I want to say it at the beginning, just in case you don't watch the whole thing, is that I want everyone to realize that there is no one single craft book that is the only craft book you need to read to know how to become the Pulitzer Prize author, okay? You need to read as many things as possible, get your paws on everything, and not just these books that I'm going to talk about, like everything on the internet, you know, anything, any kind of information absorb it. So I rated all of these books on three different factors. So the first one was accessibility. I just wanted to rate a book based on if I thought anyone from anywhere on the writing spectrum skill-wise could open up this book and understand what it was saying. I also wanted to make sure that the format was clean and clear, and that the complexity was you know, accessible but not convoluted. The next factor was depth. I wanted to compare the books and see if they are all relating the same old, same old, if anyone's got anything nuanced, if it's just repeating the basic 101 stuff, or if the book is more of like a 301 or a 401 more advanced level. And the last factor was just my enjoyment. You want to enjoy a craft book, especially you know, it's nonfiction. It's a little bit more dry usually, but a good authorial voice can always liven things up a bit. I rated each of the 10 books uh, with these three factors on a one to five rating scale with one being poor and five being great. Now what I tried to do for organizational sake is I uh, tried to split the books into different categories. So we have reference books, books focused on plot, character, and then all inclusive. Whew. All right, got that out of the way. Let's dive in. to start with probably the most popular book um, and that would be On Writing by Stephen King. This is pitched as being a mix between a memoir and a master class craft book. It basically follows Stephen King's life as he documents his writing journey from starting out as like writing at four and five years old all the way up to his book deal and beyond. So I guess the first one is going to be a little bit controversial because I actually found that this was a bit more of a memoir biography than a writing craft book. In fact, the writing craft section of this book does not even come in, I think, until the last 20 pages, and this is almost a 300 page book. I found this incredibly entertaining. Like, this is a fun biography to read. King's voice is incredible. You know this, I think, if you've read any of his other works, uh, but this was the first book I ever read by him, and I just found his voice so funny and witty. He told hilarious anecdotes in here, and it was just, it was an enjoyable fun read, which was something that I did not expect going into a nonfiction book to find. However, I feel like this is not a craft book and should not be categorized as a craft book. While it was entertaining and motivational for me to continue writing and, you know, pursuing publishing, there wasn't enough information in here to actually be categorized as a craft book, in my opinion. The little bit of craft advice that we do get is really like, 101 basic stuff that if you've ever watched any kind of like beginners writing YouTube video or anything of the sort, uh, you know it. Cut adverbs, make your dialogue crisp and clear. It was just little things like that. So for the rating for accessibility, five out of five. It was perfect, it was easy, it was just like eating popcorn, like you just munched through this book. For depth, I'm giving it a two out of five because there just wasn't barely any information and the information you did get was so basic you could find it with the most simple of google searches for enjoyment i'm giving it a five i really really enjoyed myself however i wouldn't say i enjoyed it as a craft book overall is on writing a must buy for me no for you maybe if you really need that motivation or if you just want to have like a good conversational read from a writer, maybe you'd love this. Maybe it'll motivate you. So next we are going to talk about The Emotional Thesaurus, A Writer's Guide to Character Expression. This was a harder one for me to rate because this is 100% a reference book. This is not necessarily going to be one that you read cover to cover. The book starts with a nice intro chapter about the importance of creating emotions in your books and then it goes right into the individual emotions and how to elect them. I found while flipping through these pages a lot of these 
emotions very helpful and very good um, and if not a little bit obvious at other times they were kind of inspiring like oh that would be a good emotion to add into this scene I think this is also a really good book if you are finding yourself using these same emotional cues over and over again again it's just like really inspiring to flip through the pages and be like oh yeah I haven't used that cue in a while like I could I could add in biting the nails. I've never used that before. <laughs> For accessibility, I gave this again a five out of five. I think it was great. You just flip through, you find what you need, and you plug and chug. For depth, I decided to give this a four out of five, which was a little bit difficult to decide on since some of these emotions are pretty obvious and I think that if you have written many books by the time you pick this up, you might not find yourself reaching for it as much. However, I don't think there are many books, if any others, on the market that do what this book does so I did feel like I needed to rate it a little bit higher since it was so unique and then for enjoyment I just gave it an average of three I didn't really necessarily have fun looking through this again it's a reference book <laughs> so I just found what I need and I moved on rather quickly so overall do I think that the emotional thesaurus is a must buy I would say no, but it doesn't hurt to have it because it might come in handy. And the final reference book that we are going to talk about is Writing Science Fiction and Fantasy. This is a handy little reference book that basically covers everything that has to do with science fiction and fantasy. It includes essays, looks at all of the different fantasy and sci-fi subgenres, guides to different magic systems, typical dress and costumes, lists of weapons, their descriptions, how to use them, and fantasy and sci-fi races. I kind of have mixed feelings about this book. I found some of the resources absolutely like invaluable. The anatomy of the castle, the information on military, weaponry, and just world cultures in general were really really great and wonderful for like brainstorming ideas uh, for your cultures and your worlds. However, a lot of the essays, particularly in the beginning, I just found a little dull, a little, um, maybe a little bit unnecessary. But maybe if you're a history buff and you're really, really into the, um, literally the mechanics and the history of the science fiction genre, you would really enjoy this. For accessibility, I ended up giving this a four because it is a pretty easy read. And again, over half of this is just reference. For depth, I'm on the fence. I kind of want to give it a three uh, because a lot of it is really 101 introductory to science fiction and fantasy. That's not a bad thing. If you're just getting into the genre, this can be great. But for me, I did, I just, as someone who's been reading science fiction and fantasy their whole lives, I just found it a little bit um, basic in some sections. But again, in others, the reference sections were invaluable. So I just gave it a three right down the middle because I just couldn't decide. Then enjoyment is much the same. I loved the reference sections, didn't like as many of the essay sections. So is this a must buy? I would say yes if you are writing a uh, high science fiction or fantasy. With the caveat that you might only use like 25% of the book like I did, uh, you can see with the tabs, like those were the only sections in this whole massive book that I found very helpful, but it's, it's still a great book to have in reference when you need it. Next, I want to move on to the plotting section. <laughs> I only had one book that I felt really was solely just about plotting and that one is Save the Cat Writes a Novel. It should be no uh, no surprise to you it's on this list. This is author tubes darling. Everybody loves this book very much. In essence this is a recreation of the original Save the Cat novel that was created for screenwriters that was basically a beat sheet type book that gave you all of the plot points that you needed to have in your book whether it is a great American literary novel or a fun frothy romance. I actually have an entire review and reading vlog already up for this book. I will link it down below so you can check that out if you want. I am very iffy on this book. I, I like some of the things and I dislike some of the other things. It may be personal to me but I tried to be as objective as possible in that video. Overall I just found this to be a good starter book uh, to really get the fundamentals and the basics of how a plot should develop over the span of the novel. One of my favorite parts of this book actually that I think gets glossed over a lot because most people focus on the beat sheet part of this is I really enjoyed the breakdown of each type of novel. The author goes into each genre and says how each one of those should be beaded out and I found that 
really unique. There's also a handy little pitching portion at the end if you're doing Twitter pitch contests or writing a query or a synopsis. This has a little bit of information in the back that I really enjoyed. So for accessibility, I would give this a five out of five. I think it's really user-friendly, easy to jump straight into, no matter if you've written five books or five words. For depth, I gave it a three. I do think it's just a little bit basic. It is, I, basic sounds so harsh. It's a beginner book, I feel like. It's very like a foundational building steps 101. It's still a great book, but I don't think you're gonna get this, ve this very like complex nuanced view in this book, uh, which again, isn't a bad thing. It is a book that I still recommend. I think you should pick it up and read it and take what you need out of it and then go on and continue to like absorb more information to build <laughs> up your writing craft. And then for enjoyment, I also just gave it a three. I found it fine. There were some parts, again, at the, the back of the book that I really, really liked. And some of the plotting points I really, really disliked. Again, watch that video if you're interested in my feelings. But act two, man, the, the act two in this book is just messy and it was stressful to read. <laughs> is this book a must read? For me, it depends on what other craft books you have read. Uh, there are two others that I'm going to talk about later in this video. Spoilers, uh, if you have read either one of these two, I don't think you need this. But if you don't have these two, go for this. So now we're going to move on into the character arc or character crafting novel section. Now the first one I'm going to talk about is Creating Character Arcs, The Masterful Author's Guide to Uniting Story Structure, Plot, and Character Development by K.M. Whalen. Now I wanted to talk about this specifically at the beginning of this section because it is kind of towing the line between being a plotting book and a character arc book, which is a very good thing because in my opinion, I don't think the two should ever be separated. Your character arc should be so caught up in the plot and the plot should be so caught up in the character arc that you cannot separate the two. This is actually a self-published book, I believe, that was recommended to me by a subscriber and I was shocked that I loved it so much because I had never heard of it before. I can't remember who recommended it to me. I want to say it was Chelsea. So Chelsea, if you're watching, thank you so much for recommending this. I really enjoyed it. Essentially, this is just a deep dive into creating memorable and moving character arcs in your book. It combines like three act structure, psychology, uh, the basics of human change and dynamics, and it offers a beat by beat checklist of the character arc guidelines that will fit into any type of story. I really enjoyed this book. It has a lot of the same elements that my favorite craft book that I will talk about later has, uh, where again, it really just talks about the importance of how a character can never be taken out of the plot and the plot can never be taken out of a character. They have to be married together and so wrapped up that they can never be separated. So I really just enjoyed that. She also has a really nuanced section that I enjoyed that talks about the no arc or the lack of a character arc that is popular in quite a few books and movies, which is contrary to a few of the other craft books that use books like Harry Potter and The Hunger Games as examples of character arcs. When K. M. Whalen, K. M. Whalen says that these books don't have character arcs. And after reading her argument, I kind of like completely agree. I don't think The Sorcerer's Stone has a character arc and I don't think Hunger Games has a character arc. It is so interesting. It's very nuanced. And I just, I really, I really love this book. Like this was such a treasured find. So for accessibility, I gave this a five. For depth, I gave this four. Again, very nuanced, new arguments and lots of good information. It does have the basics, but I think it expands upon the basics as well. And for enjoyment, I gave it a four. I really enjoyed myself. This is one of the craft books, and maybe it's because I did read 10 craft books in a very short amount of time, where I really felt like I was learning new things, because a lot of times reading these one after another, it was like they were all repeating each other. But with this, I felt like I was actually picking up a few new pointers, and that was incredible. So do I think that this is a must read? I would say yes, I enjoyed this. However, again, if you have these two, they're very similar in a lot of ways. 
um, but I, I still recommend this one. I think it is a great read and support indie authors. So for the next two, I'm actually going to talk about them together because I found them very, very similar. And the first one is Wired for Story. And then the next one is The Emotional Craft of Fiction. These are both very similar stories because they basically talk about how you create feelings within your novel. I will say of the two, I think The Emotional Craft of Fiction was my favorite. I found this one just a little bit uh, less nuanced, a little bit more basic, um, maybe a bit rambly. The, the authorial style here is just very anecdotal and that is not the way that I learn the best. Like you can just tell me what it is, give me one example or so and show me and I'm good. With Crone, she's just, I love other books by her and I do enjoy this book and I still think you should read it, but it is just not my personal style. Uh, I found this a little bit more like clear and to the point and still giving sort of the same information. I will caveat this by saying I do have a degree in psychology and both of these do focus on uh, fundamentals of psychology and how to use them to, again, promote feelings in your readers. Um, and maybe because I have such a, I don't want to say extensive background in psychology, but you know, like, because I know things about psychology, I'm wondering if I didn't feel like I got as much from these two books as maybe a, another writer would. So just kind of take that into consideration. So for accessibility, I gave these both five. For depth, I gave these both three. And then for enjoyment, I gave this a three, whereas I gave this a four. So do I think that these are auto buys need to read? For me and my background, no. For you, these might make the difference in your writing. That's the thing about this whole video is it's so subjective. And that's why I'm saying you need to read every book in this video that I'm talking about because everyone's different and comes from a different background. So you might have a problem with uh, engaging your readers or making character arcs that feel deep and have emotional value. So maybe you should read these. Uh, I would say of the two, go with this one. <laughs> Next we are going to move on to the Writer's Guide to Character Traits. Now this is a bit of a mix of a reference book and a character book. It's basically a reference for creating characters. This is a super interesting book because it helps you create realistic characters using real world statistics, normative like characteristics of people with specific lifestyles like celebrities, murderers, people with mental illnesses, truck drivers, etc. And the author actually has a doctorate in psychology with a specialization in uh, personality disorders and extreme mental health issues. That was just really gratifying to me because her job is understanding people. So therefore she would do a good job of helping you understand your characters. I'm gonna read the first paragraph to you because I think that it really adequately sums up what the entire book is about. So it says, writers ask me all kinds of questions. What makes a man have an affair? What would a woman, why would a woman stalk her former lover? How can I learn what motivates a person's behavior? Rarely is there one answer to questions like these, but psychological research can provide vast amounts of data that can help writers, beginners, and accomplished authors authors alike create accurate information about personality and behavior in order to create believable and authentic characters. My goal in writing this book has been to create a friendly reference for just that purpose. It's a crash course in psychology for writers. I describe the inner workings of behavior of the ordinary and not so ordinary people in lists, charts, and descriptive paragraphs. All this information is not substantive for your imagination, but a way to inspire your mind. One of my favorite things the author does in this book is with each character type, she makes a list ranging from normative to extreme so that you can find where your character is on that spectrum and then create them in a believable way that also works for your story. And as this is a reference book, you may not read it cover to cover, but I do think that it is really great to just flip through to get ideas. So for all three categories, for accessibility, depth and enjoyment I gave this a straight five I think it's my only book on the list that gets straight fives all the way across because I just think you can learn so much for it and again it is a reference not a covered cover but it is just it's wonderful all right and now we are going to get into the very last section of craft books which is the all-inclusive craft books <laughs> 
we will talk about is Story Genius, again, by Lisa Crone. She's also the author of Wired for Story. I think that that also lends itself very nicely to this book because while this is mainly focused on both uh, weaving a character arc into the plot and weaving your plot into your character arc, it does take some of these psychological cues into account. So that is why I say it is like, all encompassing it's going to hit all of your bases the thing that i really enjoyed about this book is it really does take you step by step from the brainstorming process through the outlining process into drafting until finally where you have the fully realized book that you can finish and then work into revision again it deals with everything from character arc to plotting to internal logic to really eliciting those deep emotions through psychology and all of the nitty-gritty stuff in between. One of the things that I really enjoyed about this book is it was just so great for brainstorming. It had so many uh, pre-writing exercises that really got the juices flowing and there were lots of great examples to help you kind of needle your way through that outline. My only quibble with Lisa Crone is again she just she's just a little rambly like it's just who she is. I will say um Lisa Crone in this book was a little bit more my way or the highway than she was in this. Uh, she very much so is like, this is how you outline and you need to do it my way or else, which was kind of funny going from this to this where she was like very like open-minded and hippie and freewheeling. Uh, but again, I am a, a hardcore plotter. So this really worked for me. But if you're a pantser and that bothers you, I would say just like take it all with a grain of salt and absorb what you need and then just like ignore what doesn't work for you. So for Story Genius, I did give it a five in accessibility, a four in depth, and a 3.5 to four for enjoyment. Is it a must read? For me, yes, I would highly recommend this one. And the very last book we're gonna try to do as quickly as possible because my camera battery is dying. And funny enough, it is my favorite book of all of the craft books and this shouldn't come as a secret if you've been around on my channel for a while. It is The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. Truby is a really well-known uh, screen consultant. He's worked on films such as Sleepless in Seattle, Scream, and Shrek. He basically works as a a uh, professor in screenwriting and that is what this book is mainly catered towards is screenwriting however it can be adopted into novel writing most notably in this book is the 22 steps of story which you should have according to John Truby if you want to write a good book but it also deals with everything from dialogue to really digging deep and looking at symbols and themes and again that really really deep dive into characters and complexity between your characters and the webs they should be having with all of the others in the story. It just is such a deep dive. It is definitely like a collegiate level look at writing craft, like a 401. Uh, it's complex, it's kind of convoluted, and in fact, with accessibility, I'm giving it a two, which is the lowest rating of all of the other craft books I had because it is just dense. There's a lot of information and it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. Also, John Truby is a little bit of a condescending douche. So if that's gonna bother you, that that's something to take into consideration as well. However, with depth, I gave it a five out of five. It is just, in my opinion, the deepest, most complex writing novel you will find. This is just a book that is not going to teach you how to write a book. It is assuming you already know how to write and know how to write good, but it will take your book from good to great. And because of that, I gave it a five for enjoyment as well. Obviously, it's my favorite. <laughs> All right, folks, so that's it. That was the, oh gosh, these are heavy. These are the 10 craft books that I read in nine weeks. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and a thumbs up for me. As always, if you've read any good craft books or any good regular books, leave me some recommendations down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.